Okay, on this episode of Prep Show, we're working with adapting Alex Ferrari's autobiography, Shooting for the Mob, to a screenplay. And this is about a time in his life where he got trapped directing a movie for a gangster and suddenly being unable to leave some very scary people. And this is actually one of the scariest, most edge-of-your-seat stories I've ever heard, and it really happened. So I've known Alex for a long time, but I didn't know he was this good. And I'm actually kind of blown away with how interesting and crazy this story is, and also how well it's told. So I truly recommend that you get this book on Kindle or Audible, and I'm not getting anything for saying that. But as good as it is, you can't just put an autobiography into a screenplay and just shoot it. There are problems to solve. Like, for example, how do you show character change without a narrator there to explain it? So on this episode, we're going to try to crack some of the problems there would be in turning this story into a movie. So let's do the show. So on this episode is Alex Ferrari, who should need very little introduction. He's a director behind movies such as This Is Meg and On the Corner of Ego and Desire. He's also the author of two very popular filmmaking books, Shooting for the Mob and Rise of the Film Trepreneur. And he's creator and host of the number one filmmaking podcast, Indie Film Hustle. Prep Show is brought to you by Hollywood Camera Work. Check out Causality Story Sequencer, which is a new kind of writing app where you develop your story visually. Prep Show airs on YouTube and Indie Film Hustle TV and as a podcast. And remember to subscribe to get notified of new episodes. I got you on, on the show here for a very specific reason, because you've written a book that's called Shooting for the Mob, which details a really weird... Yeah, let's show it there. <laughs> a really... A, an experience that you had where you uh, basically ended up making a movie for f for somebody who was a, a mobster type and suddenly you were trapped in that and I thought okay that's interesting <laughs> um, and uh, and you sent me the book and, or the audio book and I listened to it and I was expecting that okay this is a filmmaker who's had a weird experience and okay it'll be kind of fun to hear it is amazing <laughs> I'm <laughs> This is one thank of the you, best man. books I've ever read. And oh, my God. Thank you. I mean, it's no, but I mean, I'm just OK. So just give me five minutes here to just blow smoke up your ass. I appreciate because it. <laughs> it is so good. And, and I mean this. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. First of all, it is the it is an incredible tale. What happened to you is like out there. But <laughs> and. But it's also incredibly well told. Like I'm, uh, I've done my share of of uh, nonfiction narratives and getting that to work, and I can I can appreciate the level that you're doing this at. And they're like, I am Thank listening you, to man. something from a different level here. I, I walked my that. dogs listening to the audiobook. <laughs> I cannot remember those hours. Okay. Normally, when I have an audiobook that I'm listening to, I'm. Um, I'm kind of, uh, okay, do I have to listen to the next hour of this? Okay, okay, let me put it on because there's nothing else or whatever. Mm -hmm. This year, I look forward to get out of my dog so I could hear. I have to find out how this ends. <laughs> I'm, Alex, I'm blown away. I thought, Thank I mean, you, I always man. knew that you were good. I'd seen these other things. This is at another level, bro. Oh, man. Yes. I, I, I'm humbled, brother. I am humbled by those comments. Thank you so much, man. I, 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 I mean, I it's... It. Uh, it's it's so good. Thank, and, no, th thank you, man. And the thing about it, I mean, I kept wondering while I was listening to it, listening to it, is why does this work so well? So I think maybe, I mean, do you want to summarize the book in a way that doesn't give away too much plot? Even though I have to say, unless you give away the ending, knowing many things about the plot will completely not ruin your experience of listening to this but um uh, the, best way to, the best way honestly i've always it's just to read the back of the book real quick like those that, that really summarizes everything 
Uh, Alex Ferrari, a, a, a bipolar gangster, a naive young film director, and Batman. What could go wrong? Alex Ferrari is a first-time director who just got hired to direct a $20 million feature film. The only problem is the film is about Jimmy, an egomaniacal gangster who wants the film to be about his life in the mob. From the backwater towns of Louisiana to the Hollywood Hills, Alex is taken on a crazy misadventure through the world of the mafia and Hollywood. M huge movie stars, billion-dollar producers, studio heads, and of course, a few gangsters populate this unbelievable journey down the rabbit hole of chasing your dream would you sell your soul to the devil to make your dream come true by the way did i mention that this story is based on true events no seriously it is <laughs> pretty much I mean, covers that, everything that's good that to me actually doesn't capture it it's, it's well it's, i mean it's crazier than more. that oh it's, it is um, it is because <laughs> the thing is that you are having this thing dangled in front of you i mean this is your gift to be a filmmaker and here is a chance and you basically get involved with somebody who knows how to reach into your brain and manipulate you. Oh, a and, master manipulator, and, master manipulator. And basically this is why I'm thinking that, okay, I mean, you could read this as, okay, this is a filmmaker trying to make a movie. This is way bigger than that. This is a story about how you get trapped in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. And because basically this is the question. It's like somebody has been abused by by somebody or sexually harassed or that kind of stuff. And and the naive people on the Internet say, well, why don't you just leave? This is why you don't leave. It is hard. It has a name. It's called narcissistic abuse that basically it, it there are all kinds of patterns um, where um where these people know how they they know exactly how to trap you and and you end up believing that you'll never make it without them and they are your only chance and just when you muster the the strength to leave suddenly everything cleans up and is amazing and in and in your case just as everything looks hopeless suddenly you're meet, meeting with this amazing uh, movie star who's going to be in the movie and maybe it's really going to happen um but it was constant. It was that constant. Like I, I always said, I, I, what I wanted to, the people to get out of the book was about how to get out of a bad, a bad, bad relationship or bad situation, and that you do have a choice. That's the thing. You do have a choice, um, and you choose not to go for whatever reason. And for me, it was constantly. It was this up and down, this roller coaster ride where, where everything's just like, oh, this is never going to happen. And then literally the next moment I'm talking to an Oscar winner or I'm, I'm being flown out to L.A. to meet, you know, billion dollar producer. I'm going to Batman's you know, Batman's house for the weekend and and things like that. Did you just like, but this has to be true. Can I just keep eating this this crow just a little bit longer? And I might get my dream to come true. And it's that dangling of the carrot. But what was amazing about Jimmy was that he wasn't only just a master manipulator of me he was able to orchestrate this entire production by manipulating everybody involved whether that be manipulation the nice way or the hard way uh there's a ton way, of hard manipulation in here where you oh. get like where you get really scared like i would walk around not listening to your book and feel a little bit scared of jimmy <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm, did you I'm like my? I'm not did, kidding. It's you. You. You really painted him. And did you like my uh, my uh, my voiceover work uh, of Jimmy's it's, voice? It's fantastic. <laughs> that hurt. Every time I had to do Jimmy's voice, my my throat would. I, I could only go for like maybe four or five pages at a time with him because my voice would get because I talk like this. So it's just like really grasping. <laughs> But I wanted to really put the fear of God into people reading this. And no, but you do. It's like when when some when somebody has crossed him. It's like, do you understand? Do you fucking understand? Uh, uh, and and he's like, and and you hear him brag about what it's like to kill somebody and and that kind of stuff. And and sudden and and uh, but but not you, kid. I mean, you're 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 good. You're good. Um, you're and, good. and this I would, whole thing. I, I mean, but but don't leave me. <laughs> Because uh, this uh, this thing here, I mean, it's like if you if you abandon this, something bad's going to happen to you. Yeah, and don't turn don't, don't turn don't it was it don't turn colors on me. Don't uh, turn colors on me. Don't turn colors on me. Uh, I'm married to the streets. Uh, they're just these little terms that he would use, like, are you turning colors on me? And I just I, it took me a while before I, I learned what I mean. I understood what it meant when I he said it, but like to really get that's a street term from the old old way of doing things in, in the mob. And, and it wasn't like a mob-like guy. This was a mob guy. 
you know, and, yeah. and I met other mob guys. And it was like living in Goodfellas. It was just literally, it was like uh, he was Joe Pesci. At one moment, he was the nicest, funniest, most charismatic, kind even, a uh, human being you could be with. And in a split second, how am I funny? Am I a clown to you? And like, it's that scene from Goodfellas that you're just like, and it's terrifying. And he's so imagine that completely unpredictable, which is one of his techniques uh, mm -hmm. of manipulation. But imagine that every day for a year, because that's yeah. exactly what I would go into work every single day for a year. And, and, and I just didn't know who I was going to get. Is he in a good mood today? Is he in a bad mood today? Is he just going to flip for no reason? You know, it was, it was fascinating. Like, I, you know, I, only after distance and years, can I go back and kind of analyze what happened to me and i do a bit of that in the book um because the the kid in the book is 20 he's 26 very green in the world in general let alone in 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 uh, in the film industry um but now as a you know you know having another 20 years of experience under my belt you can kind of go back and see the techniques he used why he was doing how he was doing it and kind of really analyze his methods and I, yeah. again, I kind of break that down in the book, but I, I, I wanted to show people what he was doing, how he was doing it. Um, but it's so funny because I know people like yourself, like fr friends who, who read the book and they're like, Alex, I don't know if you're going to make it. I'm like, well, obviously I made it because I'm here and I wrote the book. But like, I, I, was, I, was, I was fearful of your life in the book. And I'm like, well, that's great, well, but you know I'm alive. And so obviously you I could came have out of gotten okay. beaten up and recovered. And that's the- There's that, there the is there is that threat of, of physical harm, whether it be death, yeah. no, of course not, because I'm still alive. But, but physical harm was definitely on the table. There's something that I thought about that I, th because the thing is that when people in entertainment, like for example, with the actresses that have dealt with uh, Weinstein, Yes. That is, say suddenly is Weinstein. Is that Weinstein? Is, yeah. Weinstein, see, sure. Yeah. Um, where people who have been exposed to abuse, mm -hmm. but it's somehow connected to trying to get a career doing something, mm -hmm. I think they don't get the same kind of support as just somebody who's just been outright abused, like a secretary who's been, you know. Uh, sexually harassed or or something like that because mm -hmm. there's this element well you're trying to achieve your dreams so screw you i mean as i don't have to have sympathy for you and i thought about i thought about an analogy because there's something about that that's that's not really right because in the film industry if you have a talent like let, let me give you an analogy where you wouldn't wonder about this at all if you are a rocket engineer there may be two places in the world where you can get to use your talent. And if you can't get in there, your life has no meaning. That's it. You have a talent. You can get to use it in these two places. What if the gatekeepers in both those places are super abusive? You have this. Mm -hmm. It's not really about, I mean, this is the thing that's a little annoying that everybody thinks that filmmakers and especially actors, they're doing this because they want to see their name in lights. And that's mm. in there, but it's kind of way in the back. It's that I have this talent. If I don't use this talent, then it's there's a chance my life has no meaning. I need to right. use this. I need to, I can only use my talent if we're building rockets. Like I can only use this talent. And that means that that traps you because it's not just that you want to achieve your dreams. It is that this is possibly the, the only chance for you to use your gift that keeps you in there. It's like, it's not being famous. Ultimately, the director is usually not famous. The director gets to be creative and we're doing this and it's amazing we're on the set and we're shooting and picking angles. That's, that's the dream. The dream is not the fame. Well, the thing is that Hollywood in general uh, is really good at selling the sizzle, not so much the steak. Um, mm -hmm. And they're excellent at the sizzle. And that sizzle is what draws like a moth to a flame uh, people to Hollywood on a daily basis coming off the bus. Uh, brand new crops of people chasing that dream. And they believe that the only way to make their dreams come true is to go through the system go through the studio system go through these gatekeepers and and harvey was one of the big gatekeepers and he he was a kingmaker yeah. um without question he made many careers you know without him 
you know, Robert Rodriguez, uh, Tarantino, sure. Kevin Smith. Um, there's, I mean, the list goes on and on of filmmakers that he propelled. He was doing just horrible things behind the scenes. But that, that um, not illusion, but uh, that mythos is what drew people to him and to his company mm. because they knew he could make it happen. I was in a similar scenario where Jimmy, Jimmy wasn't a kingmaker, but he was enough of a thug that if he could get if he could get me in front of kingmakers, that's he was just a sure. ga another gatekeeper to a gatekeeper. So he was doing that. Like I don't think I would have stayed, or I don't think the story would have been nearly as interesting if we would have never met any of the of the hollywood people if i would have never been flown out to la if i would have never had these big power meetings at the chateau marmont and mm. and uh, at the ivy you have and, some and, uh, you have some spoggles. whoppers in there it's actually one of the questions for how to shoot this is how do you replace those in a movie i mean they're easy yeah, to replace in a book but how do you replace them in a movie and you get the same yeah, oh my god it is uh, super famous person yeah. it's how do you we'll, how do you we'll, we'll, how do you put an actor in there and feel the same awe like any, well that's some the, other that, actor. that's a that's a good question and and no. i mean as far as the you know we could get into that right now if you want i can i have some, some no, no, no you, you right finish now. your thought so um so if if i wouldn't have been able to get into um i, I mean what jimmy did was giving me that gatekeeper thing that that little carrot that golden carrot that he kept dangling is what kept me in so in an abusive relationship um, you know, when you're beaten by your spouse or hurt mo emotionally or physically, there's those windows of time when they're beautiful, that they're perfect. It is a and huge part good. of the technique. You you look up narcissistic abuse on Google, it mm -hmm. will be one of the top five things an abuser does is that you have those moments where you're like, wow, this is what it's all about. And if it could all just be like this. And it's basically, it's I think his name is called hoovering. That basically, mm -hmm. and when you're trying to slip away because it has sucked for too long, you get hoovered back by right. all these things that are great suddenly and no problem. And exactly. He's being oh, nice he was nice to me. Yeah, he took me out to dinner. He gave me a gift or she gave me a gift, whatever that is. Um, and that's what this was. This is exactly yeah. the abusive relationship I was because I would get you know, taken out to dinner or I would have be flown out to LA and had these experiences. And it was just enough to not only keep me on the hook, but to keep the rest of the, the crew. I mean, he had a full crew of Hollywood this professionals. Spiel worked on a ton of people and they were all equally I mean, trapped. I mean, everybody was planning three, their escapes. It was about a three month, um, I think for about three to four months of that year, we had a full crew of Hollywood professionals prepping the show. And I, you know, and as you read in the book, you know, I had big time people flying in from New York and LA uh, that were like high end, you know, high end costume designers and high end DPs and things like that. And and they were stuck. Well, but who also had a stature enough that they could see what was happening there and they're like oh the my one God. the one the I mean, one person the one costume designer that mm -hmm. got flown in she did uh because she didn't she just is not one of those people that could have been taken like when you when you're dealing with certain kinds of people uh at a certain level in their career they're not going to put up with this like i would not put up with any of this crap today i just wouldn't no. um so she the second she saw it she's like she called it out Get me out of here because she has a power. She has the power because she was so famous in her world that if she put the word out, it's over. And Jimmy yeah. knew this. Where my other crew, they were professionals, but they just didn't have that gravitas. They just did not have that 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 um, that power to be able to just demand anything from him. The thing we're not really capturing as we're talking about this now is just how trapped you felt, and you because you describe oh. you describe this really well that. After a certain point, this was not even about making a movie. It's like, how do I get out of this and not get uh, get get shredded? Whacked. Like, get, how, get whacked. how do I get out of this and not die? Like, there there was that, and then if you remember in the book when there was a competitor director trying to get into this situation. Oh, that was pretty I, funny. Also, because he was, so, was, he was so pathetic. That guy he was so transparent. 
Oh my God, who's so transparent. Um, but that dude, there was a guy in the book that, uh, that he was flown in to rewrite the script. And then he was trying to get into the director's chair. Like that was his moment. The second he landed, he wanted to be the director of this movie, unknowing what the hell he was getting. You into. were hoping for him to get that so so you could be let off the hook. But at this, but at a certain level, I was defensive. I'm like, this is my movie. This is my shot. I'm not gonna let you. Even though I wanted to leave, this was so weird because I wanted to so get weird. out. But yet, when someone else tried to come in, I'd be like, wait a minute, hold on a second. And that's when that mindset, that mind starts screwing with you. You're like, wait a minute, if I leave and this guy comes in, he might get all this that I've been working at. Like he might get the shot. So no, so, wait a minute. So it's like, it was so weird to be in that It is sunk place. cost. You know sunk uh, cost, right? I mean, it's it, like I've put so insane. much into this that now I can't leave. And that's like, hey, I just have to pour money into that, keep pouring yeah. into that black hole. Every day that goes by was another brick around uh around the moat like around the, around me to get to get out because like yeah. well i've invested this much so there's that situation like don't cut your yeah. losses like well you just keep going just keep going something will happen keep going and every day that goes by the deeper in the quicksand you would get it's like an inch every day to the point where I he had get out. He, he can't, I can't get, get out, out. And, until and, he and there is a cool character change there by the way because you start to become more and more passive Oh. Basically, because yeah. things happen around you that are so wrong all the time, and like for example, you you have to, I mean, you have to give up most of your credits for it. You have to keep money paying for things <laughs> for his movie because this is your shot, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so hearing about it, like when you hear you say things like that, I'm like, what an idiot! Who is that guy? Um, no, but but, that, but that's the thing. That's what it looks yeah. like from the outside because. It, from the outside, it's just, why don't you leave? And I think people don't usually understand how trapped you are in a bad relationship. I have been in some, and I've been really trapped, also to the point of planning planning my escape. And, and this was for things that were successful. So I had mm -hmm. presidents of major companies flying over, talking me out of leaving. And that's when I learned that nobody will help you leave a success. And you're just, you're yeah. trapped and you get gaslighted and you think I'll never make it without these people. And, and you, you end up in that situation. You become like a little bit of a child that you think that I'm not going to make it without these people. Without them, I'm cooked. Yeah. But anyway, it, it, I want, oh, there so was a lot of that. There was a lot. Of there's that. a lot of that. And that's the thing. That's why I think that this is an important story. This is way beyond a filmmaker. You could take this whole story and substitute it with a model and you would have the exact same story. I, and, I mean, yeah. I think the that's entertainment, the entertainment industry is kind of an inter a good backdrop for it because uh, the hoovering is so effective because oh. the thing, the carrot is like made of gold. Oh, it shimmers. It shimmers. It I mean, shimmers. Look, look, I'm flying. I'm flying out two days after Christmas to go meet Batman. Like, and I grew up with this guy, uh, the actor who played Batman, uh, and I was a huge fan. And I'm driving to his, you know, I, I fly out to his to his monstrous property and I'm driving, you know, it takes 20 minutes to get from the gate yeah. to his house because he owns 20, 30,000 acres. And you get to this mansion. It's Wayne Manor. Like, I'm literally going to Wayne Manor and there was an Alfred <laughs> there. And Alfred yeah. was just like, you know, there was a, a, an Alfred style guy. You get in. Yeah. There's a private chef there. Like, what, you know, what? <laughs> what do you I mean, you that's, do? that's, and that, and so you keep thinking just as you're about to give up hope, you think maybe this yeah. thing is going to happen anyway. And maybe, maybe this sacrifice, ba basically maybe getting rammed from behind over and over and over again is somehow worth it. Maybe, maybe this abuse somehow, maybe there's a silver lining and there is, and, and it's thing, only to keep you in it. Right. And the thing is that the lesson I learned in my life that that's, there's no, goal worth it for me at this point in my career and my life to yeah. take abuse like that and like that i means, just want but that means that you get out at a time before somebody has captured you and somebody <gasps> well, thinks right. that they should hang on to you it's like now you're slippery right so e exactly exactly so that's actually that's kind of important because so let's 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 talk a little bit about uh, some because so the reason that we're talking here is that we just want to brainstorm a little bit about 
how you would change this to turn it into a movie. And the, the mm-hmm. probably the main thing that I was wondering about is, do you see this being narrated? Because obviously in the book, you're there to explain everything. And that means that you don't really need external character changes. You can just say how you felt. And you, do you want to keep that in a movie or do you want to basically make it all show, don't tell? No, it would definitely be a narrator. Uh, there's either a narrator and or a character who talks to the to the camera. I felt would be really interesting because I, I would love this this book that turns eventually hopefully into a movie to be a commentary on the industry as a gen- the whole process of making a movie. I haven't mm-hmm. really seen that before. <clears throat> so this kind of this is warts and all of making a movie and what we've seen with like the player or um state in maine or living in oblivion or these great movies about making movies um preston sturgis is uh sullivan's travels those kind of films um they there hasn't been anything that i've seen that is raw and truthful and almost scandalous in the bs and the um just corruption uh, of what actually happens and you go through to actually get an independent film made. Uh, even, um, well, I mean, obviously the um, the room, what's his, the, the, the disaster artist, that mm-hmm. was a whole other, that was a whole other uh, example. But it's kind of at that level, just a different axis, but it's... Uh, it is completely, it, but, it, but it that was... That, it is a story at that level, I think. Yeah, without question. But I, I want to kind of like really educate, almost like um, the Big Short, like to educate. I was thinking people. the Big Short because they also have these campy inserts where they kind of, I mean, where <laughs> there's enough of a narrator to explain this. Yeah, Ryan Gosling doesn't exist. He never existed in that yeah. in, in, in the reality of the Big Short, like of, of all of those companies and those people. The Ryan Gosling character was just created to be. A narrator essentially and to and and to explain things to to the audience that were extremely dull and you know there's also something um, you can do with that because mm-hmm. you need to solve the problem of how to make i mean i i mean obviously you wouldn't be able to bring all these movie stars in um because well, there's, i mean you could bring well, maybe get other movie stars but if you couldn't get any of them and you can just get beautiful people then the narrator would be able to see that, uh, okay, so imagine so-and-so or so-and-so. Yeah, or, we could do something like that. But there's also the question of do we do this in period or do we do this in the current day? So, m- you know, the movie takes place in 2001, which is a very sp- – like the time period has its – is a character as well, you know, um, do you with think 9-11. So? I, mean, I, 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 I didn't pick that up at all. I mean, I felt like you could transplant this anywhere. I could, but you know, it's, you know, could we do it in today's world? I mean, not literally today's world because we're in the middle of COVID, but um, in, in in late 2019 world, um, yeah, I think you could. Um, could we attract some stars? I think we could uh, to can, do cameos. Can, should we talk about that for a second? Because there's something that you mention in this story all the time because basically the 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 movie in the story here is is going to be based on the life mm-hmm. um of Jimmy essentially the movie is supposed to be a giant blowjob but pretty much <laughs> but, pretty much, pretty much. But, but what you found all over and over is how easy it is to get major movie stars involved when the, if they have to play a gangster that's still true uh, out here in the meta story like oh, it, oh no it's someone that, some, to get someone to play Jimmy? Oh, no problem. We'll it's fu- a phone we'll call. Fu- I mean, it's insane. It's a, it's a phone call. If I have a good support team around me, if I got a good producing team um, around me, uh, obviously Boris is going to be, and we haven't spoken about Boris, Boris is going to be my cinematographer on it. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so meta. It's so meta. Yeah, oh, it's, no, no, no. It's the, like the, staring the yourself of, in the neck. It's insane. Uh, we'll talk about Boris in a second, but like bringing, um, but bringing, these, uh, bringing actors in to play that kind of character there'll be a fight for it. As long as there's a team and there's a decent sized budget, you know, to do it. And and I've talked to people about it and we're probably looking in the range anywhere between two to three million all the way up to seven because seven is kind of disaster artist world. But at seven, you need to have bigger names, like really attract bigger names. Can I I have a couple of opinions about that? One of them is that 
the only person who really has to work here is is Jimmy. Like if you if you get the right person for Jimmy, you can oh. just fill everybody in around them, and whatever you choose, whatever floats your boat, will work. Um, yeah. that's one part of it. The other one is that I'm, I'm thinking through the story. I'm thinking this doesn't happen in that many locations. Like there, there is one big location, which is the racetrack, which ends up being the production office. But but then there's the Hollywood stuff. It's all the Hollywood like sure. shooting. Sure. Chateau, Mar- Chateau Marmont. Like they're, those specific. But, that's, that but that's very specific because as soon as you're talking uh, rich people in mansions, that could be anywhere. Like you could go oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah, any yeah. state and just say, hey, can I shoot at your mansion? And they're like, oh, cool, a movie. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, there's I mean, a, there's it, the, it it's seems, not on a production. Seem, it doesn't seem expensive to shoot this thing here. Like if you – so, I mean, this – oh, sorry, I lost my earpiece – this this seems like the most doable movie I've ever seen because this role of Jimmy and it it is I mean you paint it well but it's that it's mwah, it's oh an it's actor would fucking kill, uh, fantastic that role I appreciate that no no that role actors will fight they will be fighting for that role you will you it, will be able to get like a like real stars in that role and that's the only thing that has to work and then. The budget is as much as you can you can claw together, but it seems that makes like sense. That makes you could sense shoot for this for a million and two plus talent. It, uh, it yeah, absolutely. There's 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 no question we could shoot it around that that range. Um, when we would shoot it, I have no idea because of COVID. But um, no, no, I mean, but that's also okay. I'm I mean, I'm just I'm just I'm so supportive of this because this is a you, cool man. story. But it's also for me, it's bigger than film industry. I, I get that no. you want to you want to represent, you want to show how the sausage is made. For me, it's a story about being trapped and uh, well, and it, in a well, situation that gets absolutely. more and more impossible. Like this is a mainstream movie. No, there's no question about it. I want. I've heard people who've read the book who've told me that they're not in the film industry and they found solace in it and that it helped them get yeah. through a bad scenario. Because look, there's so many people in the world who are in bad relationships, whether that be a boss that they feel trapped, or a spouse, or a family member, or a friend. There's they always have a, they somebody have a hold on you. And, and right, you're exactly. And and this is a very entertaining story in regards to how to deal with that and 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 how to eventually get out of that situation um but i agree with you i think that the jimmy part is the key part of the whole movie um my part whoever obviously brad pitt brad pitt for me uh a younger brad pitt um (laughs) obviously i mean because the resemblance but uh no um but uh, the the two key parts is me he still looks pretty um, uh, pretty smooth though he's he's a good looking dude i don't think i he is a very i don't think he's playing 26 right now Uh, i don't think that's his (laughs) that's his no we could spend 200 million dollars de-aging him um so i'll talk to brad and see if he can make that happen um but those are the main parts and then everything else it just it 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 revolves around those parts but like uh, for everyone listening there is a major character in the story called boris and boris is uh my cinematographer in in the in the the prep that i met and he's one of my best friends and and he's like from russia or eastern europe He's an Eastern European. Um, so he knows DP. real mafia. So he's the only one who isn't completely intimidated because he's no, used to people he, who break legs like quickly. Yeah, he was like he told, and I said in the book. He goes, "Jimmy's not a real gangster. You want real gangsters? I'll show you real gangsters." So he was, but Jimmy also respected him. I never saw him get out of hand with with Boris. Uh, he always respected him. There was just that level there with him, unspoken, unspoken. Um, but. So Boris was my angel, but it was Boris and um, Frank. Both of them, Frank was my first AD. Both of them were the most seasoned uh, people on my my, mm-hmm. my my team, my production team. And they were my guide. They were my protectors in many ways. Um, uh, Boris was my guardian angel and, and kind of guided me through this process because when he found me, I was essentially just a rag doll. I was beaten up so much that I could barely get anything creative done. Like I just couldn't even, you know. So he brought yeah, me back. You had up. all the he, will beaten out of you, and he kind of yeah. So he, he him and him and Frank really helped me come back up. And um, so I, I talked to Boris because it was Boris's idea for me to write the book, and um, and he's been very supportive of me making this for 
since the since the, the day yeah. after he flew out he's like we got to make something about this and uh i told him i go there's only two rules um if i'm going to make this movie there's only two prerequisites for anybody involved with trying to make this movie with me uh, or to get the rights or anything like that to make this you know to get the, the book rights i direct and he's the cinematographer other than that i'm fairly open Sure. I'm very open to a collaborative art, but those are the only two non-negotiables, and um, and that he's the DP. I mean, he's a big, he's a very well-known DP now, and you know, uh, I don't want to give away too much about Boris, but he's very well known. His work on big projects now, he's very vetted. It would be not mm. a problem at all to have him. He's not like he's not done anything. He's fine. But I talk to Boris. I go, Boris, the day that you and I are on set shooting a scene with you and me being played by two other actors in the scene That's where I'm wild. direct it's I'm directing myself you're lighting yourself I think the space time continuum will explode um, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's never in the history of Hollywood that has never happened ever um, there's never been a movie about a filmmaker where the filmmaker first of all directs the movie about his life or her life and let alone the cinematographer who's like it's just a, a very no unknown and quantity. it's it's yeah. great marketing it's uh, oh yeah i mean i mean look just uh, as, yeah oh yeah you, i can i can lean on the marketing alone just that i'm the director and i'm in you know and all that kind of stuff so no it's it's full circle there's one thing i want to loop back to just uh, with the yeah. uh, with the narrator thing um because there's something that there's something that I think is important that you that you ought to do is that even though you're allowing yourself a narrator, I don't think a narrator can do the heavy lifting that the narrator is doing in the book because the narrator no. in the book is 100%. Agreed. And that means that there, there is a lot of character change that's just right now explained. And this, oh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not saying this to you as a, some kind of a pretending to be a story guru. It's just that this much I know is that if you could come up with a way to show more of these things and not have to say them. And I wanted to, like, I, I basically I wanted to ask you, you summarized it a little bit at the end, but how you changed and how you could symbolize that change. Like, I mean, let me throw yeah. stuff at you. Like, for example, well, for example, if you become more and more beaten down like you have less and less will that's that's easy for you to explain you can even have a sigh in your voice while you're explaining it but while you're explaining it and you you do that in the book but i, th I think you ought to have some things that the character does several times you can see how he does them differently yeah that that would be a good technique to do as well um i think there's good there's there's characters that were not in the book that will be in the movie um there's going to be additional characters that are around my life that i did not maybe composite characters of and are you thinking to use them to show your change like you have, yeah, you have you, a girlfriend who's almost not mentioned and before i heard that correct. nearly towards the end i i thought wow if there was a girlfriend here she yes. could be the one like mm -hmm. kind of ringing the bell saying this is not bad and then we can see you c just keep on doing the wrong thing and yeah the, yeah the girlfriend the you know i didn't keep i didn't make the my, my girlfriend at the time a more major character because i didn't want to bring her into it i mean there is a lot more story there look there's a there's a lot more story than it's in the book uh so i i actually i, I was very made, raw i think you made the right choices because the the, the it really works like there's the yeah. feeling of no fat listening to this yeah, no, it, it, there's definitely no, but there is definitely more characters, more people outside that can help with the transition or the, the transition. But of that's, but that should the be the character. goal of them, because I realized that mm -hmm. since you were there, I think you can be bamboozled a little bit by reality by thinking that since they were there, it's also important that they're in the movie. Oh, no, 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 no. It's and, not about that. That's the reason they're not in the... But it means that you have people you can talk to. I mean, that's why people have sidekicks in in three act stories. It's so they have somebody who can ask them questions and you can show change. And I mean, that's the only reason why Worf is there in Star Trek. It's so somebody can explain what we're doing with this uh, field, warp field. Yeah, Hol right? yeah Holmes and, and Watson. Yeah, I mean, you need Watson. Yeah, exactly. Without Watson, Holmes doesn't work. Um, but yeah, I agreed 100%. There, there's going to be characters that. Um, there is no one character that is on the journey with me almost completely through. 
there isn't one character other than Jim. I mean, not really. Even even Francisco. Um, yeah, he doesn't even stay with me. Kind so there of. There isn't one. Yeah, kind yeah. of. But there isn't one character that stays with me through the entire time that I can kind of hold on to or talk to. So that character will probably be designed in the film. Um, or a composite okay. of a handful. That's good. Things I mean, like it, that. It's, it's, but to real, answer, it's real enough. Yeah, so to answer your question in regards to how I changed, um, it took me years to figure out that change. As I, as I wrote in the book, like it took me a while before I could even get back on a set. It took me about two to three years before I could get back on a set, and I was devastated um, for a long time. And what changed was it was a very slow change. A lot of the stuff, I was so ignorant to the pro what was going on that it took me years of, of, of marination on what happened on a subconscious level to, to but realize. But that's the thing. That's, that's what we need to tease out. Like we need to figure out a person who has that change. What does he do differently so that we don't have to explain right. it? And, uh, right, and it has to be done within the in the period of a, of a ninety minute or two hour movie. Well, it's, I mean, I think you should make it a goal to get rid of as much narration as you can, and then do narration oh, for the things that have to be. And that means that, for example, showing you, I mean, show, showing you how showing how you get, like for example, seeing you take have no reaction to abuse. I think is very powerful, and I think that's the kind of stuff that actually works stronger when it's not narrated. Because when it's Agreed. narrated in the book, you are kind of there to kind of have kind of the humor of hindsight that is like, oh, and then I, and then I reacted like this, and uh, look at that. I mean, that's a crazy kid, right? If you just see that having somebody taken, for example, like when you lost the producer and writer credit after having produced and written the whole thing, and then you just say, there's a little pause and you say, okay, Jimmy, that's much more painful without somebody there to explain it, I think. Oh, no, I, I don't plan to have this wall-to-wall -wall, um, narration. It, it would be... So it you would just want to have the option. Well, it's going to be... I, I feel what I see in my head is a very big, short-style Ryan Gosling character. That's a pretty person. good... It's a pretty good analogy, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's just like... Because with Ryan Gosling in The Big Short, it wasn't wall-to-wall -wall narration. He came in when there were specific things that needed to be explained. It wasn't about emotion. It was more technical. Um, and that's where I kind of see that character mm -hmm. doing. Talking about the technical stuff of, of the film industry. Like, what's a... What's a um, uh, a letter of intent. What's an LOI? You know, like how useless that is. And like you see here, guys, well, they're actually, using this again, LOI. That that one is also easy to show because all you have to do is have somebody see it and laugh and and just say, "Oh, that's adorable." <laughs> exactly. But to, but to to actually have a, a scene that like a little a little side scene like with what's her name. Um, uh, it, that, that's Margo funny. Water. That that's funny as an as a narration. But like, but yeah. for an example, there'll probably be other elements that would be in in the filmmaking process that would be brought out, so we can educate the the audience. And by the way, the audience is a, most people are fairly educated now in just the filmmaking process. I, I'm not going to say a lot, but they understand that there's a director and there's you know and there's that and stuff. But sure. the in the in the behind the scenes <clears> of how you get financing, how you talk to an investor, these kind of things, that would be where I feel that, that a Ryan Gosling kind of character, even narrating and or be in the scene, would be helpful. I don't foresee that character explaining emotion or explaining yeah, that's uh, kind of that's the, that's the key thing, I think. Yeah, that's going to um, be within the character and the performance um, and, the, and, and within the, in the words. So I mean script. that that would be my homework for this thing here is to to try to come up with many change events and just make lists of things you could do that would capture that actions that would that would capture somebody having uh, you know I mean for example there's the beginning there's there, you have a preamble in the book which is actually what I think is one of the more difficult things because it's the backdrop basically I mean, I guess I can I can say this. It's not too much of a spoiler because it is the beginning. But you start in the beginning with being like a really super arrogant young director. <laughs> yes. And, and you have way, way, way too much belief in yourself. And you invest way too heavily and you get crushed. And, yep. and that means that 
by the time you bump into Jimmy, that looks like up. Do you see what I mean? And that's very much part of being trapped because if you were doing better, that wouldn't have looked like up. Right. And And so I think that's an important thing, but it's also, I mean, it's, Let's talk structure a little bit after that because I'm super liberal about your structure in, in this mm -hmm. year. I, I wouldn't pollute your story here with three-act structure. It could ruin it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there, I, I do think that movies need to get started. And there is a danger of not getting started. So the problem that you have is that if you don't spend enough time on it, that prior thing, you being, being arrogant and completely over-investing and getting crushed – then you don't understand a big part of the allure of what mm -hmm. comes after. But one thing that I found a lot in all in all of the I mean all of the nonfiction that I've made the the like the directing actors course especially is that you need to make things shorter in order so you can move on. But the, when you make them shorter, you also make them meaningless. And so basically everything goes through a process. It's a long explanation. I have to get it shorter. I have to get it shorter until this is stupid. Just cut the sucker. And then it's out completely. And now finally we can move on. And I think you have that kind of a problem with the warm-up mm. um, because you could easily spend 20 pages on the warm-up. And it's not oh. the most interesting part of the story. Yeah. And the thing I, is that, well, this is the question. How do you get the warm-up in there uh, without wasting a lot of time, but it's still having impact. I feel that from just as you were talking, I was like, oh, I already started seeing the edits in my head. Sure. Where we start, we start the movie <clears throat> with the opening chapter. That mm -hmm. that that precursor to something that happens later in the story. I always love that. I always like a story starting with like the murder or, or something like that. And you're like, oh my God, there's a murder. So now, now you're watching the whole movie and you're like, or the whole episode of a, a show and you're like, someone's going to die. So you're kind of like looking for that moment. So we start yeah. this, we start, so that's a great, <laughs> yeah. So we, intro we introduce Jimmy, we introduce me. And then from there, we, we go into a narration uh, and or guide talking about... Oh, so about you, you literally, I mean, you want to cut to, you want to basically start with, well, you actually do that because the first thing you say in the book is that you start with the worst parts and say, how could we possibly get here? And I let's mean, go. And then we go. And then I guess at that point you have, I mean, this is Steven Spielberg opening Jurassic Park on somebody getting eaten. Right. right and, it's, and after it's, it's, that, it, yeah. we can wait for 20 minutes schlepping through the desert talking about uh, echograms of, <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, can the you moment, imagine if the you moment that you've scene? dumped that, we know we're coming back and now we can wait for a lot of exposition. Right. Because imagine if you would have started in the desert. Uh, you're like, oh my uh, god! I want to hang myself. I just want to like this is horrible. So, so I mean, you, I need to. I, I mean, this is a this is a, a trope. It's been done a million times before, but right, you basically course. have to. Right, and then from there, going into a page or two of montage of scenes, like, and then we go. Here's the film school. Here's the commercial directing reel. Here's this, 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 this. Here's the video store. Here's the and then just kind of like walk you through that in a in a two page scenario like two minutes giving you the backstory of who the main character is so, so everyone has an understanding of it but very done don't you think you should very, wrap very target all that around the crashing and burning that happens that that basically you need to get this character eating eating dust by page eight or something like that well no we, uh, by page eight you're introduced to the you know, i think you're you're going to be there has to be some exposition so there has to be a little bit of well what, can, like, can can you just kind of sneak it in while he crashes and burns well i mean i i i really want like i the structure of the book there's you know, for me in the story, I felt that that was the best structure as far as okay. getting the I audience think, information. I think you're 99% right about that. So it's like you start off with the crazy stuff, like the dinosaurs eating somebody. Then let's go into a little exposition, but I'll speed up the exposition. That's not 20 minutes. You don't need 20 minutes of exposition because there's not that much. It's just who is this main character we're going to go on the road with? Mm -hmm. uh, because if they don't connect with me as a main character in those first two or three minutes after the dinosaurs eaten eaten uh, eat somebody, um, then it's difficult for them to jump on the board. So they got to feel me. They got to feel my my. I think goals. I, I feel you as you crash and burn. 
So well, anyway, th- there's that. I'm, there's- I'm just planting a flag there. Ultimately, you will go away from this year, and you're going to do whatever you want. <laughs> and, I know, I know, and, I know. And I, know. I support you a hundred percent. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So it's I'm, the- so I'm just uh, I'm I'm just defending an idea a little bit longer. That I mean, you'll figure it out once you're once you're writing it sure. for real, but. I feel with you when you crash and burn. And actually that's where the narration is personal because you talk you get to talk about how how naive that is. But Oh yeah, it, and then and pain, then when you finally painful. meet the we devil, we get to immediately suffer with you. Yeah, like you'll meet the devil soon afterwards. You there'll be the meeting of the devil which is Jimmy, and then we won't get into that one moment uh, where he shows his true colors, and that's going to be that moment, like when but he shows post- who he you is. You can postpone that as long as you want because we can smell it. Oh yeah, exactly. We could all see it, but he doesn't see it. So now the audience knows, like this, this guy's not what he seems to be, and it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Can I talk it's, about it's, that for for a little bit here? The structure yeah, of this, because originally when we had talked about doing this before, I'd heard it. I, I was thinking, let's get a, a story guru <laughs> on here and let's help figure out how to do this. And I really mm-hmm. changed my mind after that. I mean, there is a time and a place for structure, especially if you're. Making a story from scratch, maybe you need some structure to hang it on. The structure here, and and also normally when people make an autobiography or like people think that just because it's real, it's good, not realizing that reality is a is a crappy storyteller usually, because <laughs> usually <laughs> no, but because stories are kind of a cartoon version of reality where important things are pulled out and things tie together and we make yeah, of course. moral inferences and reality never does that reality just ends in kind of an ambiguous place and then you die right <laughs> and <laughs> wow that's so sad <laughs> no i know but i mean what's, how, a, what's this most sad statement i ever heard in my life like just <laughs> mirandas you end up in an ambiguous ending and you die it was just so <laughs> <laughs> no, but let me prove this to you. Let's oh, pick no, somebody in pick somebody in your mind that you a, re- a relationship that you used to have and it just kind of ran its course and now you right. don't really oh, know that yeah. person anymore. If you were going to make a movie about that relationship, where how would that movie end? It would be, it would be a Miranda ring and then it would die. It would be, <laughs> it it would just kind of plod along and then it goes a little yeah. bit up and a little bit down and and, this, and there might be a, a big explosion at the end, or there might be like a big fight that ends the relationship. But the or point is like that, that it's not naturally a story. And the thing that's, no. that that I puzzled about with your story here is that it's naturally a story. And that's sometimes reality comes together and tells a story. And and so first of all, one thing that I wondered about is that why. Like a story that works has tension and release and tension as release. It's like James Cameron said a thing that I love that if it's all up, then nothing is up. Like you need, right. you need, you need uh, intense stuff and you need quiet stuff just with Arnold out in the desert fixing guns and talking about the future. You need that yeah. and you need the stuff at Cyberdyne, right? Right. Um, your story has that. You have tension release, tension Thank release, you. tension release. And I was wondering, I was thinking, is that coming because he kind of sequenced reality into something that would have that? Is it because you're a great storyteller or is it because it just happened that way? And I started thinking, maybe the abusive relationship is exactly like that because it's down, 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 and then up, and then down, 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 and then up. And there's tension and release baked into the nature of the relationship. Is that I think how that, what do you feel about that? I agree with you a hundred percent. There is definitely tension and release in the film. Uh in the, excuse me, in the story. The the nature of an abusive relationship is that. So I it wasn't so. I didn't I didn't manufacture the tension and release. Like how that much did you na- shuffle things around to make it work in like did how much did you change the order of events in order to make it work better as a story? None. 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 That's the what events, I felt listening to this. The events happened in the chronological order that they happened. The tension and release that happens in the book happened in real life. Obviously, over a span of a year, it's compressed, 
uh, as far as just, you know, I picked the, the juicy parts out, like you were saying. Life is very boring. There was, there was days and weeks we were just sitting around doing location scouts or sitting around the office or I was, you know, yeah. watching movies with Boris and, and listening to director commentaries. And That's either not in there or it's meetings. a montage, basically. Right, exactly. So there was a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of mundane stuff, but the basic broad strokes of the story is, you know, done, 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 boom. L.A., first time. Okay, oh my God, we're going to get financed. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, we're almost going to get financed again. But then there is a layer on top of that that is also something that's kind of common wisdom that you're supposed to have in a story that these crisis after crisis after crisis are supposed to result in change. And they do. You have character arcs. So basically, the way that let me let me rotate it so it's a graph for the camera. So basically, you have this tension release, tension release, tension release. And then you have... Mm -hmm a character arc that goes like this and it has like change event, change event, change event. So it's not like just you have one crisis and that produces one change. You have another crisis that produces another change. You have these... You have these crises that all contribute to the character arc. Next, it, this gets worse and worse. You get dig, you get dug deeper into the dirt, deeper into the dirt, deeper into the dirt. How is he going to get out of this? Deeper into the dirt with every tension and release. So it's just, it's so perfect. It's, it's oh, insane. You, <laughs> but this is also, it, this, is, it, this was why I didn't bring a story guru on this because God, God bless them. And, uh, and it's, it, story it, structure can be just as important as it can be not important. I think that if anybody tries to force this into a three-act structure, you should pull out a cross and garlic and just say, away from me. I think your story works. It's it, you could just take the screenplay. You could take the story here, turn it into a screenplay, change the narration into into doing and like showing, not telling, and you'd already have a movie. And I think that taking a story that has such a natural ebb and flow and trying to force it into somebody's ideas of a structure, I think, would be a crime. And and I think keep yeah, the structure I, it, exactly it, the way it is. It won't. Yeah, the structure I think is going to stay uh, very similar to the way it, it is. It works, the book. but again, it, it, at the end it of the works, day, bro. The, the, at the end of the day, the book the the book works as a book, um, but there are elements that need to be added for it to work as a movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's more a translation that type plan. thing than it's really structural. It's just that Correct. there's some things that can't be expressed. No, it's that not way. Stru- the structure is the story is the story. Yeah, the story, the story, and, you know, the reason that Boris fought so hard for me to eventually, he was the one that was telling me, Alex, you need to write the screenplay. I'm like, I'm not going to write a screenplay. I'm not going to go chase money for this thing for another five years. I'm not, I just won't do it. And he finally said, well, why don't you just write the book? And I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I can write the book. So, yeah. um, you I lost your last, book. you and, lost your last no- reason why not. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't argue with that. He's like, just write the book. I'm like, oh God, fine, I'll write. Of the course, book. you're right. And it took me, and then it took me about a year and a half to to get through the writing of the book because of the emotional toll that it took on me to write the book. I mean, I literally would be crying during certain chapters. I would skip over chapters while I was writing the book, knowing where emotionally I had to go back to. It was kind of like reliving the worst time of your entire life for a year while you were doing it, and I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back to Oz. I didn't want to go back to that world. I avoided it for almost 20 years. So to to go back and like it and it took me about another almost another year to do the audiobook because I, I remember because I talked to you at that time and I said, why don't you do an audiobook? And you're like, oh, then I have to go I'm into that it. headspace again. I can't do it anymore, man. Now, and the you- movie is a different story. Like, I don't, I think going back into the movie aspect of this is going to be very different than. I think at this point be- you've processed it. But I've by the way, you, you, you prove something with, you prove something with the audiobook that authors should read their own books. If you know what, nobody it, it could was, have read that book. I mean, I mean, and I'm <laughs> so off, I'm so it disappointed on Audible all the time that that you you know you have. I mean, what like, what's the name of that book? Is that uh, the subtle art? 
of not giving a fuck. Of not, fuck. Uh, uh, F, yeah, yeah, exactly. I heard the author on a podcast. He's a great communicator. And then he had somebody else read it who's like the diction is a little too good and you feel like he doesn't understand it. And the author understands it. Why are you not reading your own audiobook? And I'm so glad that you did because yeah, I, this I, I, would have yeah. been less if you hadn't read it yourself. I mean, I, oh, I mean, I, I mean, my... this sounds like just one giant fan party, but I think no, you just no, I pr- did an I, incredible I, I, job I, here. I, I truly appreciate Per, and, and if anyone who knows Per knows that he does not do this. Uh, you <laughs> no, don't I really don't. People, you do not. I'm very stingy. Boy, you do. You're very stingy with your compliments. So I understand. So when I heard those compliments coming from you, I was like, oh man, that that means a lot coming from you. So I I truly am humbled and truly a a pleasure doing it. But what I wanted to do in the audiobook is I wanted to like give the emotion that I feel when I was writing it. So I would read and and then of course I acted out characters a bit too um, because that's how I would tell the story. Like when I was at those Holly, at Boris's Hollywood parties and then all the directors and all the film people would come in and they'd go, are you the dude? Are you the director? Like, you know, Boris has been talking about this story for years. We thought he was joking about it. We never thought this could be a real story. You're like and an M&M. It's and, like they, they exist. Yeah, it's like and I had to sit down and hold court. Uh, at these parties and I would Fantastic. just kind of tell the story and I would do the voices. So I was like, I have to bring that to to the audio book. And it's just uh, that kind of story specifically, like my second book, maybe I could have someone else read it, but I'm a big fan too of having the author read your own book if you're capable of doing it. And going through that whole process again, it was, it took a while. It took a, I, like I literally wrote an entire other book and did the audiobook for the entire other book before I went back and did the audiobook for my first book. Yeah. Um, be, because it just, I, you know, I, I, it was just so difficult to go back into that headspace. But shooting will be different because, one, I've processed it. Two, collaboration. Like when you're in a, in, in a tunnel by yourself, it's hard to get back in there. But having a conversation, like as you notice, I have no problem talking about this with you. So talking with collaborators, talking to an actor about the headspace I would I was in. I mean, can you imagine, I can't even imagine this. Can you imagine an actor who's playing me in the movie to, ha- to have his director, who is also the person he is playing in the movie, like I- I'm there with them all the time. So I'm basically an open yeah. book of who this character is. And you then Boris is there as space. well. You need to and give him Bor- some space and accept it's I mean, not going to be exactly like you imagine. Oh, of course not. Of course not. And then Boris is going to be there to back up whatever I say or to get Boris's perspective. And then, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing. It will be, it will be just such an amazing experience. I look forward to the day I'm able to make this movie. Um, I, I already think have. This, I think this movie has to exist. This, I, this, I, is, I hope this is so. just not, I mean, so basically it's kind of a joke like in screenwriting that you have somebody who works at a 7-Eleven. So he writes a screenplay about a 7-Eleven clerk who fights crime by night. And so, <laughs> right. I mean, and that's why on on paper this should suck. But yeah. it's, a, it's a filmmaker who is writing an, a book and making a movie about a crazy filmmake experience, filmmaking experience. If you don't look deeper into that, your first thought is, who cares? This is something at a completely different level. And yeah. I mean, this is, I, this is a story about humans in a very crazy situation. And the filmmaking stuff is the backdrop, but it, it really could yeah. be something else. And you could tell the entire same story. Oh, no, you could put this in any industry. I mean, you could even put this in like the cookie industry. Uh, you could put this in the modeling industry. You could put this in any industry. But Obviously, Hollywood putting has this just... in the film industry is the shiniest possible version of this, I think. And Correct, that's where it, and that's of, where it is. So don't change anything. We're high, te- we're high tech carnies. That's all we are. We're high tech carnies. Yeah. So we're carnival folk in the industry, but we're just high tech versions of, of just normal carnies. So it is a very colorful world and then you throw the mob in there with hollywood and now you've got two very colorful worlds colliding in a way that hasn't been done before this is a, like i've talked to people in the industry about the book uh and and in the movie potential about it and the thing is it, it is a, it is a a twist on the mob movie because there's been just obscene amounts of movies made about the mob this one has nothing, never been made i've never heard an, of this it's an original it's an original 
take on and the it's mob. Also, who would come up with this? I mean, if you had your no, you couldn't storylines. Why would you put it here? <laughs> no. I, there's no way that this is a, a, a like like I said in the very beginning of the book, my very first line in the book to really set the stage. Um, the book you're about to re- <laughs> the book you're about to read is based on a true story. All the names and people and places have been changed except mine to protect the innocent, especially guilty. If you don't believe this story is true, then I should get a fucking award for fiction. <laughs> yeah, it, it, <laughs> because it's just like it's true. I'm like, I, who would write this? Who would make this story up? <laughs> you know? And uh, and also, I do have, I don't know if you ever saw it, but I have a full hour-long interview with Boris uh, backing up everything I've said in the book. And his face is blurred out, deep deep throat style, and we change his voice and everything. Sure. So people so people could just, you know, I wanted somebody else. And I, I, I reached out to a couple people that were part of this. Um, the, uh, oh God, I forgot his name. The actor who pl- who worked in the trailer in the book um, yeah the the uk the uk actor sure um he he's out in la so i reached out to him and i gave him the book and he was just like oh my god because <laughs> he's like oh my god and that was the other thing too a lot of people who read the book that were in the in the process in, in the in the in the sausage if you will no one knew the whole story they yeah. only knew their point of view so like um henry or he- yeah, henry henry was his name i think i called him um the that actor only knew up to the point where he left and boris essentially only knew from the moment he landed up until the moment he left he didn't see all the other stuff he heard some stories but he never saw the whole process so no one knew the entire story except me because i was the one living it so it it is i I hope it does good it it does good out there i hope it's a value to people and i think that if i'm able to put the the movie together eventually uh, i think it can really reach a lot more people And, and honestly not only entertain but help people because um, I think it's something we need. I think it's. I think this movie should be should be there on right there on Netflix next to Dolomite, and I mean that's. That, yeah, I love Dolomite. Oh God, I love yeah. Dolomite. But what I mean is that there's that's the exact place where there's room for a, a movie that has a very specific topic like that, mm-hmm. and it it would work at that level. I so it's just I mean I know you refer to it from the filmmaking side and that is interesting. I mean, but I think this is this is interesting far far beyond film industry and to me the film industry part of this is kind of the least interesting part of this. It's Oh, uh, there there is a story about a crazy crazy situation and uh yeah. and I I think this 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 is a mainstream movie. I I hope so. I hope yeah. so. And I, you know, if we do do it in today's world, uh, meaning that, that we place it in today's time, um, getting actors to play the, the the cameos and things like that, I I don't know if I could do it. Like, could I get one of the actors? Could I get Christian Bale or Ben Affleck? Well, it's not just that. It's that some of them are jerks. And who do you put in there? To I mean, then you need to find some other star who's willing to be and like an alternate persona. I mean, that's. I thought about that because it works so easily in the book, and you realize that that you can't just reveal who people are. But if you're supposed to see them on screen and be impressed, how how do you do that? Because it, it, that's because it's be I, I know exactly what I know what that's exactly like. That you you're on a set, and then suddenly it's just Arnold Schwarzenegger in front of you, and that's just something else. And if you watch that in a movie, and it's somebody there, and then there's a pointer that says "famous movie star," and you're like, okay, I guess it doesn't have the gravitas of like, oh my god, is that Hugh Jackman? Oh my god, is that Christian Bale that just because showed up? Because there's like, a, there's an otherworldly thing when you suddenly bump into a real person who's a face you've seen that many times and i'm telling you like um it, it, you know it, uh, it off, you off air bit. off air i'll tell you who all the actors are um okay but, cool <laughs> uh off off air because i know people read but the book it's, like, it's actually not i mean it's not very important if, i mean that's just kind of the 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 fanboyism is kind of cool the yeah. the difficulty yeah. is creating that shock and awe without having them actually be people you'd feel that about because that, yeah. and that might be one of the places where you're just going to have to fix that with the narration and kind of make it a, make it a, oh i could even say, i could even i could even say it like you know this person should be uh this actor but we couldn't afford him so this is who we got uh, or something well, but you can those. only do that when they're presented in a positive light though the, of the, course the moment because like you 
you have a guy who's just who like you have a guy you you met at Hotel Hollywood or something, and he's a guy who grew up in in Hollywood. Yes, he, like grew up famous basically, and. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're trying to have only, this conversation with him, and he's uh, yeah. and he's like on his phone Johnny half Hollywood, the time, yeah. and it's like, oh well, cool meeting, cool, cool meeting. I mean, well, yeah, my people will call your people, and he doesn't even he never got your name, right? So. Right. It was a very yeah. That was the only I think is the only negative pres um, presentation. Of I think an all actor. the other side. I think most of them are just being kind of cool, and um, mm -hmm. and I think oddly approachable. And that's, I mean, oh, that's a couple the thing of them, that you, a couple that, of them we that you could, mention I, I, that it's, and you think, is this just because everybody just is so, is so hungry for playing a gangster? It's like a gangster role in a screenplay is just the biggest door opener in Hollywood. It's, it's insane. There is a couple, there's a couple of actors who were in the movie, in the book, who there's a possibility I could get. Uh, I think, you know, if I would reach out to their, I mean, if, again, once the team is put together. Would that work, it, it, though, if half of them are real bona fide megastars and some of them? Oh, are, no, 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 no. I would still try to get equivalent actors of today's stat, a statute mm -hmm. to get those people to cameo. Um, but specifically, there's a couple that were in the, in, in the real story who, if I reached out to again after this whole story and gave, sent them the book and the whole thing, that I feel that they would come out for a day just one to do could it. also hope that once I mean once you have like somebody somebody really famous attached to Jimmy that it becomes easier to get the more oh, you yeah. have the easier it is to get them and then my thought was that um, either you have them be like good or you have them be bad I mean it seems like people are generally open to playing a terrible version of themselves as long as it's kind of there with a wink and a nod. Yeah, I mean, again, Jimmy, I think once Jimmy's written into the script, I think people, I, I think actors will beat I themselves. I mean, but written into the script, that's like a copy-paste from the book, right? I mean, Pretty much. I mean, you, all I have to do is send them the book. If you send them a copy of the book and go, read this book, do you want to play Jimmy? I mean, that, that's uh, got to be the most attractive role, like in, in recent history. It's so <laughs> no, but I'm just saying that character is scary, and he's scary in such a subtle way. He's that scary. He's funny. He's uh, terrifying. Um, he's but he's, kind. He's, it's a it's a creepy kind he's, of scariness where you suddenly have this dr this cold feeling that you could end up in concrete at the bottom of a lake. But at the same time, and within a minute of that feeling, you are laughing the hardest you've ever laughed at a story he just told about something that happened. I mean, it just, it, it works it's, out of the box. It, There's, I mean, I'm just, I'm saying this partly just to give you the confidence to not second guess this when you're putting it in the script. This works. Don't fix it. Just move it over oh, no, and, no. and fill in the lines that need to be filled in. But the stuff that's there is scary. And I mean, you're just capturing that character. I mean, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy's going to be a verbatim from the book almost, I, I feel, because his character, I mean, obviously there'll be some more dialogue written or something, but, but the feeling of who Jimmy is, it, it, there's no reason to change. In all honesty, the, the characters in the book will stay those characters. Um, they're they're very well defined you know all the crew members all the the sub uh, you know francisco then all these other characters boris they're all very well defined so i don't feel that there needs to be a change i think the only change will be adding a, cons a composite character uh, or a couple other characters that might be able to help the narrative with i think you need people movie. to talk to because there's a lot of these there's a lot of thinking yeah, here he has them, yeah. basically in private and if you right, I don't, if you can throw mm -hmm. in some C three POs here and there, then you have people to talk to. Right. And then, yeah, that's exactly who I need. And and, yeah. and and I didn't have that honestly. That was the reason it's not in the book because I just didn't have. Yeah, you're anyone. Gonna, you're going to have to make that change because otherwise it's going to have to drown in narration to make some of these points. Here, probably. Correct, and I won't do that. I won't do that. I agree yeah. with you 100. Um, percent And uh, and you know, in the ending might the ending might have to work a little bit differently because I feel that the oh I I was thinking about that there was something that I missed a little bit at the end I mean so you kind of well I shouldn't give don't it ruin away. it no spoilers I, I, no, no I'm spoilers. not I have to be really careful here because you end in a in a reflective place and that works in the book I completely get it and that's actually a very cool payoff 
the 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 I will tell what you, you got out of it, but I kind of want to see. I I mean, I want to see fireworks at the end. Oh wait a minute! So I will tell you um, when I'm done. When we're off air, I'll tell you what I have in mind. I don't okay. want to say it here yet, yeah. but I will tell you what I have in mind for the. But for I, the, I I want like the fireworks, a, a victory and lap. for the ending. Oh no! You're gonna get fireworks, yeah. and you're gonna get a victory lap, and I will, and I'll explain to you how I want to do it. And yeah. it's when I thought about it, I was like, that would be the perfect button to this story. It's not in the, it's not in the, in the book, obviously, because it didn't make sense to be in the book. But in but this the, is something that actually happened, even. Well, the book, well, the book, the book stops at the point of the publishing of the book. Yeah. So the story continues. I still am continuing. So making the movie of this is postscript. another aspect. It's it's a postscript to this book. So mm -hmm. there might be a second edition to the book once the movie is made where we add in two or yeah. three or four chapters on this part of the story because it's still arcing. So or you have, or, or you see them, and then you go out, and then you have a crew filming them, and then you go out and you have a crew filming. <laughs> and then we just keep. No, I, I'm just, just being stupid. I mean, it's 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 kind of funny. <laughs> and then, but and then the camera turns on the audience, and who's filming you? It's yeah. What is that? No, movie? I, I'm just uh, I'm just movie, being stupid. Um, but it's it's the, because no, it's the, so the movie, it's so meta, the, huh? Um, F F Fellini, uh, and the band plays on. He did that oh. at the end of his movie. Because it was about the movie making, the whole movie about and the band plays on was basically the history of cinema. Uh -huh. And at the very end, he turns the camera to the audience. And okay. It's just like yeah, it's so everything so has been done. Anyway, I was just the, being stupid. Actually, I I think that would actually kind of blow it a little bit. I think. Uh, I mean, that's a com that's a completely different axis, though. It's uh, anyway. It's a whole other I mean, ultimately, thing, you're going to do what you're going to do. We're just trying to. Yeah. We're just trying right, to well, challenge some of the ideas here. I listen, man. I appreciate the, the first of all the humbling, kind words that you've said about the story, about the book, um, about you know trying to get this movie made. It really means a lot to me, and I appreciate you bringing me on the show to kind of workshop or beat this up a little bit. Uh, is been great for me. Yeah. Uh, but I really do hope that this story gets out to people. I th um, it, it I really think it's, this story really deserves heard, to be told. Yeah. I heard so many reviews and so many people who've read the book that they said this should be a prerequisite at every film school. This has to be a pre like this sh every filmmaker needs to read this book, especially if they're starting out in the business, because it, it just it just throws out so much information and knowledge of only experience, you know, and and it takes time to get that experience. I had a, you know, I had a tiny thought like that. about that because actually I did have the same thought and I thought, what category could I put this in? And I could only put it together with uh, John Badham's I'll Be In My Trailer because yeah. your book is brutally honest and his book is brutally honest. And, I love John, yeah. And it's that kind of honesty. Like uh, you need to live in reality and quickly. Um, oh, if not, if not, this business will eat you up so quick. I just see it on a daily basis on every aspect of the business. I mean, I think that, you know, look, I'm, I'm going to get real for a second. Uh, uh, my whole career, I, I've asked, I've, I've looked at my career and said, well, why haven't I gotten the shots that other directors might have gotten, other opportunities that the other directors? Because I go, I know I'm talented enough to direct. I've directed you know, for 20 odd years, uh, I've done good work. Um, why haven't I gotten the shots that I've gotten? You know, why did I have to go through all of this pain um, for these last 20 odd years uh, in this business? And when I launched Indie Film Hustle, I understood why I needed to go through that pain. Because now it's my job, my mission to report back to the troops, report back to the people coming in behind me, people at the bottom floor, not that I'm at the top floor by any stretch, I'm just maybe a couple floors above them, but just to understand, to, 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 to give back the, the, the information and the knowledge and the experience I've gotten uh, in a raw way, which is not done very often. It's just not done. People don't, everyone sugarcoats how this business is. Everyone kind of like, oh, well, it's kind of this and, oh, you maybe do that. No, I come out and I'm like, dude, you're going to get your ass handed to you if mm -hmm. you don't do this. And I feel that the shrapnel that I've taken and the damage that has been inflicted upon me in my career over the course of 20 odd years 
is been the absolute necessity that I've had to have in order to be successful doing my mission and doing the things that There's I There's another to do. lesson that you mentioned in the book and I've learned the exact same lesson because I guess this is not too much of a spoiler but uh, one of the lessons that you that you learn is that you were trying to get it through somebody else. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, and, allowing someone else to have the, the keys to the castle. Well, but yeah. the, the thing is that you think that somebody else is is going to be your ticket or somebody else is going to take care of it and all you have to do is is direct. And basically, it's – it's like Dumbo. It's like when you fly, it, the magic was in you all along. I mean, it was you. And when you finally did it your, yourself, you weren't waiting for somebody else to lift you. And I've had, the, I've had similar experiences. Like 20 years ago, I was – are you still there? You froze. I am. Yeah, I'm okay. Here. Your picture froze. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, 20 years ago, I was in a completely different place. Um, I had just had – a very big success. This was in the music industry, like uh, right, 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 a million, so, yeah. a million plus albums, stuff like that. That wasn't as many albums then as it is now. I mean, now it's like ridiculous. But um, oh, and, if you sold a million albums, it's just insane. Like, huge now. <laughs> so, kidding? so I had almost all the money stolen from me from my biggest success, and. Um, Basically, when I look back, I was putting everything in other people's hands, left and right. It was like the record company didn't give me all of the advance because they, I mean, there was like untold godless amounts of money. And I only took some of it because they wanted to keep some liquidity. And, oh, yeah, I mean, you'll take care of me later. It'll, it'll be fine. And, and I ended up getting like just screwed left and right and my, having my accountant turn out to have a crush on me and fill in bogus tax returns. So the police showed up at my old address. And uh, I mean, it was like when I left- There's a book there, sir. There's a book I there, left, sir. <laughs> when I left those relationships, it was like Indiana Jones coming out of the Temple of Doom. It's everybody that I was attached to hated me and there was knives in the air flying after me because everybody who was sucking my blood uh, suddenly got angry when I left and moved to a different country and that's the most I mean that's I lost so much money there that I'm still reeling from it a little bit 20 years later oh, and this man, was this was this was all the income from my biggest success and it was also basically five years of work that just Oof. Um, oh, yeah. because yeah. they just they just started, they started do, doing drugs they lost the money on Nasdaq and the thing is that at that point it doesn't matter what's owed uh, all, 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 all that matters is what you can collect and that's nothing when the money doesn't exist um, mm -hmm. but I mean it's just the, the whole thing and it all came from leaning on people and somehow thinking that I'm just going to show up and do the part where I use my talent and then somebody else is going to do the accounting and the managing. And, and then I just went out and bought books on everything and said, I'm never doing a tax return again until I can do it myself. I'm never having somebody do that before I can do it myself. And that was the same thing with Hollywood Camera Work. I was thinking, oh, I, okay, so I guess I'm going to get a distributor now. And then I'm thinking – what I'm just going to fight to collect the money. I'll have no ability to audit them. They're going to kill it after half a year because then the marketing isn't easy anymore. And uh, basically, what are the, what is it they do that I can't quickly learn to do myself? And I'm in a completely different place that I maybe I wouldn't have done that. Maybe losing that money kept me from losing a hundred times more. Mm -hmm. That's and and I sorry I mean that's now I'm kind of taking over the whole thing here but that's that it seems like that I mean you mentioned that lesson a little bit but when you when you talked about having to go through it I don't know that you need all the pain and suffering I would hope that you wouldn't need the pain of and suffering but you became your own person and I'm, but I'm, and maybe if that's what it takes to become your own person then maybe that's actually worth it. Oh, I'm also extremely stubborn. So um, that's why it's taken me so long. So I don't think I needed to go through all the pain and suffering. I just did because I was just stubborn and ignorant uh, and egocentric in many ways throughout my career. So um, when I didn't learn the lesson, the lesson became harder to learn. And it kept coming at me until I finally figured it out. And I'm still learning lessons. I'm still doing things. Um, but I feel that 
Yeah, but your you core know, character changes when you go through that. There's something oh. in you that says that there's something in you. There's a part of your identity that just becomes solid. And I'll tell it, you what. Yeah. If if I I didn't mean to cut you off, but if I wouldn't have gone through Jimmy, if yeah. I would have never gone through that, um, I wouldn't be who I am today. I wouldn't be as um, <clears throat> like I said to my audience on my podcast. I go, if you guys ever wondered what the origin story is of the voice that you listen to, that grizzled, you know, you know, battle hardened, shrapnel taking guy, this is this is when I got bit by the radioactive spider. Yet I am no superhero. But that was like this is it. This and I and then you track it back because prior to this experience, I wasn't as raw or brutally honest because i hadn't really gone through anything that heavy yet in my life yeah. so this was like that thing and then it just started to compound over the next decade of other there's other stories there's other projects there's other people i met nothing as extravagant as um yeah. as this uh but it just opened up uh it, it just added more and more layers uh, to this onion that is me. Yeah. Um, but it gave me that grizzled kind of but like, it's really you know what, cool. man? It's, it's really cool yeah. that you are as honest as you are because it would, the, the, it must have been tempting to sugarcoat it. But it's, I think it's so useful to see other people just really put it out there how they screwed up because that's, oh. that's your chance at learning from somebody else's mistakes. And that's the same thing. You watch other people's polished movies and you think I'll never be as good as them. And you don't know how they sat, how Martin Scorsese sat in my in the edit bay and thought, oh my God, this movie sucks. How oh, yeah. am I going to save this? And if you see people going through that, then you will feel less crazy and you will be able to, you will doubt yourself less and you will, and you'll be able to learn their lessons. You don't have to repeat that stupidity. You just need to see it happen. I feel that if I have a superpower, it's being raw uh, yeah. and being honest in regards to my failings. Uh, I have no problem whatsoever. In, in my second book, I had a whole chapter about how I failed uh, selling a, a film of mine. Uh, and it's just something you don't see often. So when people see something like that, uh, there's an authenticity to it. Like this book, Shooting for the Mob, this, there's an authenticity into that in that story that you can't you can't deny yeah. it's there there's no, there's it's, a it's rawness palpable. and when i went <clears throat> and when i actually went down to write this when i sat down i'm like if i'm going to write this i got to let it all out it's got to be raw it's got to be emotional it's got to be um just all warts and all have to be in it and i did that and it's, i was very it's proud really of that cool. fact it is one of the best books i've ever read and i i, 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 oh, man, I shit means you a lot. not Few things have captured my attention like this book here, and it's not <laughs> because you. I've gone through similar things. I have. I uh, there are a lot of shysterism in that book. I've. Ex I, I'll tell you some other time. But I've met a person who's like a mini benign Jimmy, and I was doing mm -hmm. a lot of what you were doing, but it was never scary that way. It was just. It's mm -hmm. just all the same ways of dangling a carrot. But basically, mm -hmm. that's that's besides the point. But it it it. This captured me both because the story is so interesting and it's so well told. And thank you again, I'm, my friend. I appreciate it's that. It's so cool that you did this and you did it in exactly the way that you did it. So it's I'm I'm a I'm a thank huge you. fan. This sounds like an infomercial, but it's not. <laughs> There's, I will send you the. Where do I send the check, Per? Where do yeah, I send yeah. the check? <laughs> there, there is no payoff here. I'm just, I'm genuinely enthusiastic here. This is really cool work. And so, if anyone who knows Per knows that this is not the <laughs> usual Per, no one ever sees or hears this kind of reaction. Um, so I am very honored. So why don't we just, so uh, why don't we wrap it here? We could keep going for hours, but uh, we have other mm -hmm. topics that we want to come back and talk to, talk about on on different episodes. Alex. Yeah, yeah. It was so awesome to have you on here, and I really, you're, you, it's really, it's really cool to talk with you. You, you have some uh, you cool angles on things. I appreciate that, yeah. my friend, and I really, truly appreciate that. And of course, if anybody wants to pick up the book, shootingforthemob.com. It's it's there for you. Yeah, so. or on Audible where I picked it up, and uh, yeah, so the exactly. audio book is a treat. Trust me. So very cool, <laughs> Alex. See you later. Thank you, brother. So I hope you thought that was interesting. If you have a story that needs help, get in touch with us on the show website at hollywoodcamerawork.com slash prep show, and maybe we'll bring you on the show along with a story guru and try to figure out how to improve it. 
But that's it for now. So make sure to follow us on social media to get notified of new episodes. And I'll see you soon. Yeah.